Ladies and gentlemen, every year around this time, there's something you can feel in the air. And today I've been feeling that this is the Can Kale Show, episode 24. And I am your host, Keenan Lafferty. And I'm in a very festive mood. Today is December 18th, 2011. And that means that the holidays are right around the corner. And today we are going to be learning to paint very glowy, cool Christmas lights. Now, before we get started, I just want to let you know that last night I consumed a little bit too much eggnog, and because of that, my voice is not going to be quite what it is all the other weeks. And uh, But fear not, because we will still continue with the tutorial as planned, and yes, we will be getting help from our good friend Maokai, the festive treant. So, without further ado, we shall begin this. Hmm... All right, so for those of you who have already seen this up on the site, on the LOL site, you'll know that Maokai got his new Christmas skin. And today we're going to be taking a quick look at that and doing some adjustments to the lighting and showing you also how to render like glowy lights in your compositions. So the first thing you're going to do is you've got your layer here. Right, at just your base layer. You're gonna create a new one, Shift Control N, like that. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick a color out of the background that is gonna represent our atmosphere. So I'm thinking kind of like this brownish one will do fine. So let's throw that down on our new layer. Shift F5, we'll do that just fine. Bring that saturation down a little bit. And now you're gonna go up here and set this to multiply. And that's gonna turn your picture all kind of dark and spooky looking. And then from there, you can play around in the saturation and kind of get it to the proper look that you want. You can even shift the hue a little bit. I can make it go more green, but I kind of like kind of like where it was at actually. So that is pretty pretty good, pretty good. So now, oops. So now we will be moving forward with that. And now down here, you'll see this little icon here. This is the mask icon. And it's actually very handy when you're creating a new light source or you're creating a new light comp for your picture. So we're going to hit that right there. We're going to select a soft brush, a soft edged brush, and we are going to begin masking out areas of that multiply mask that made everything darker. And you'll see as we do that, it will begin to light the scene. So obviously the fire is going to be one of the main sources of our light here. And then just think of where that light is also hitting, like here, here, there. Uh, we've got these little candles up here. Let's light those. We've got little lights around this wreath. And so basically, that's all you do. You just go through this sign, <laughs> go through this scene, and you start taking out your lights. By the way, yes, as I was saying, uh, last night was quite a I had an awesome little Christmas party with my friends and uh, had a little too much eggnog and I stayed up quite late so you'll have to forgive me if I am not my usual self today but I am in a good mood nonetheless very festive very happy to be here as usual and yes oh which reminds me yes okay for those of you who have been watching and I know that you people are awesome and I really want to be able to bring shows to you every week. Unfortunately, the next couple weeks, I will actually be taking a Christmas vacation. One that I need very badly, mind you. And so because of that, I will not be releasing new set episodes with our usual 25-30 minute tutorials every week. Uh, at least until the new year starts. So be sure that, uh, be sure that you prepare for that. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that you guys knew that. I didn't want to leave you out in the cold. Leave you out in the, in the frosty winter cold. But yes, we will return in the new year, and it will be glorious. Let's put some light on there. So you can see, as you erase this, you're starting to set up your light sources. And, and um, starting to bring out more lights in the picture. And that will help to stand your character out. And eventually what we're going to start doing, hang on, let me move this, shrink that down a little bit. There you go. 
So you just go right through here and throw down all your lights. And you can see, look, you kind of take it off. You can see what it's doing. It's creating a, a darker scene, a much darker scene. But don't worry, we will light it back up. It won't stay gloomy forever. It will not stay gloomy forever. Let's see here. Yeah, so you got the fire coming out right here. This is this is going to be our, one of our main light sources, so make sure you light that really well. And everything that that fire is hitting. And again, this is really nice because once you've got all these colors down, all the information is there, and all you got to do is just keep uh, taking away the multiply mask. And this is a this is a tool and a technique that I use quite often when I'm doing spot charts, and it's really really nice because it allows you just to work quickly. So with that, yes. All right, phase one complete. Now we move on to phase two, which is adding our lights. So what we're gonna do is create another layer on top of that. Sorry, one moment. Yes, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about that. As you can tell, I am uh, preparing to get Yes, now where were we? <laughs> oh, of course, the lights. The lights on Maokai. We will be going straight forward with that, and hopefully no more interruptions. As you can tell, around the holidays, things definitely seem to get quite hectic. But nothing will stop us. No rain, no sleet, no snow. We will make these lights on Maokai. So what you're going to do is now you've got your new layer. What I want you to do is pick your color and make it like a very, like a straight white. Go for a straight white. And now all you're going to do is quite simple. Just throw in where you want those lights to be. So I'll have one there. Let's zoom in. Actually, let's do a soft brush for this. But still, make them small. Just make them in these little light shapes. Just wherever you want to see a light. And we don't need to have many. Let's actually make these big bulbs. You know, like those uh, those good old-fashioned electric fire-starting bulbs. I love those. I love it when I see trees with those. Now we got all these safe LEDs. What's up with that? That's not what the Christmas spirit is all about. It's all about... The chance that your freaking house could burn down, man. That's that's what's awesome. That way, at the end, when your house is still standing, you believe that's where Christmas miracles come from. That's where the belief comes from. But now, we have these safe bulbs. We trust in technology. No more spirit. So I want to bring that back. And that's why we're drawing these ones. The big bulbs. So that's looking pretty good. Let's throw a few more down here. Yes, all of these are white right now, but we will be making them colored, and I'll show you how to do that. Put a couple out here, a couple there. Let's put some on his arm, too. Why not? One there, one there. And then what you can do if you really want to get get detailed is you can do this. So first I'm going to go back to this multiply layer. I'm going to reduce the opacity just a tiny bit so it's not quite as dark as it as it is right now. Okay, now what you want to do is create another layer behind that. Grab yourself a dark color and then you can draw the cord that actually connects these things. There you go, now you got the Christmas lights going around there, and you can reduce the opacity on that too, just a tiny bit. Now, the fun part. This is where you add in the glow to your lights. Now things are going to get very, very festive. So let's begin with our green lights. What you're going to do is pick your green, and it doesn't even have to be like straight green. In fact, it works better if it's kind of like a lighter, desaturated green. 
So go for something around there. Now what you're going to do is this new layer that you created on top of your white lights, you're going to create another layer, obviously, and then pick hard light. And what this is going to do is with your soft brush, wherever you paint with it, it's going to kind of like enrich the colors around it. Sort of like a color dodge, but this one always sent to me to be more believable and good looking. So you just take that soft brush and look at how big it is too. Like I'm just kind of pressing down a little bit and what it's going to do is it's going to create that glow around the light. Even though all these lights are white, as you put the color, as you put the or the uh, hard light upon them, they become the color that you want. That's good for green lights. Let's get some red lights. So you go red, and remember, don't go, don't go here. That's too much, too much red. Remember, it enriches the colors, so you don't need that much. If it's too much red, it'll come across as looking kind of. Right, actually, here I'll show you. If you do this, it's gonna look like this. See, it's like it overpowers that light, it makes it look kind of funny. So it's best to go for a desaturated, more lighter red. And that gives you the more the more proper look. Let's put some up here, up here, there, there, and there. Now what other colors do we have here? How about like a magenta, purple, blue? A magenta, purple, blue. <laughs> what is that? Uh, a magenta and a purple blue. That's good. I like that. Let's get a few of those on there. Let's get uh, orange. Gotta have orange lights. Let's see here. Let's get some yellows. Yellow, I think you can go a little bit more saturated to get a proper look. Yeah, that looks nice. Let's get some brighter ones in there. And then let's go back to our actual magenta and get a magenta. Our magenta purple blue. <laughs> uh, see? So now what you're doing is you're creating you're creating the color of these lights based upon the glow that's outside of them. So now what you've done is you've added these these light sources with these glows on them. And what you can do is you can even go to the fire, say I just eye drop that, but that's about the color that I'd want. And then you can grab a big brush and do this kind of thing. See how that glow just emanates out of that fireplace? And then you can glow the side of anything that, that, that's hitting. And it'll continue to add just more atmosphere and a little bit more of that distortion to it. And this can help to bring out the shapes of your character. Like this arm is a little bit, it's kind of hard to tell exactly where it is unless we kind of break that, that piece, that uh, shape out of there. Also, let's make his eyes glowing. His eyes glow green. Whoa! Whoops. Too much! Too much power! Going back. There, there we go. There we go. There we go. And you can go back and reduce this a little bit. Tiny bit. There we go. Now what I want you to do is go back into that multiply layer, select the mask, and basically the way the mask works, as uh, I should have explained this earlier, is whatever, like you'll notice your colors are black and white. Whatever you paint black, it's going to remove that mask and it's going to change it back to the way the picture looked before. And the white is basically the other way around. It will take, it'll put the mask back. So think of it almost as erasing and not erasing. <laughs> the nice thing is is that with a mask, if you take something away, you can always put it back the way it was. I don't know if that exactly makes sense, but there might be another tutorial where I can go specifically into using this mask. So anyway, when you have a mask and you want to erase it, uh, choose the mask and then pick black, because that will do the trick. So wherever these lights are, what I want you to do is go back in and remove where this where the mask is because that will light up wherever the lights are. There we 
go. Very good. So you can see that's our that's our hard light layer. And you can see what that does to the picture. In fact, let's see what what happens if I desaturate this a little bit. It's kind of nice. You can play with the hues. Oh, I actually like that one. That kind of kicks it more towards like a like a purple. That actually looks really nice. Mm, I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna roll with that. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you can render little bits of light source. And I guess what you would call it really is like a glow or a bloom. You create that light source, and then you take that hard light, and then you can push the edges of it. Like even let's see. Let's say this, like an extreme example would be, say we had Maokai here, and then we had a big light source that was behind him, say this star. Say this star is very, very bright. And this will, this is going to look quite funny, but let's say this star is now the brightest thing in the picture. What you're going to do is you go back to that hard light layer, grab yourself a yellow, kick it down a little bit. And then what you can do in pictures, which is really fun, is you, say you have your character and then you have the light source behind him. What you can do is you can throw in this bloom effect and it'll kind of distort everything around it like that. And uh, actually, put this on its own layer. And depending on how much you do it, it will just distort more. Like I see it used a lot in like anime pictures and stuff, where they'll just paint the character, and then behind them they'll just throw in this really, really strong, like uh, bloom light. And then what you can do is you can go back in and kind of erase it where you don't want it. Let's see how much glow and atmosphere that puts into this picture by doing that. That thing looks really, really bright now. And then you can go in and and even. <laughs> Make it brighter, you know, just by almost kicking it to a white. If you look at that. See, so that is how you make things look like they're bright. It's basically by that glow that's around them and the darkness that it fades to. Like if, if the background was all bright still, see, it doesn't look like it's that bright. It doesn't look like it's glowing that much. But see, once you do this, it really looks, wow, that thing is really, really bright because the way that the way that I like to look at it is when your eye sees something bright, it darkens everything else around it. So if you paint it like that, your eye will read it that way and say, hey, that thing is very bright in the picture. It's making everything else look dark. So it's all about contrast, so make sure you keep that in mind. And with that out of the way, that concludes our special holiday tutorial of the k and Kale Show, episode 24. So now we'll be moving on to our questions of the week and the question to the audience. And the question of the week is, a lot of people have been asking me what canvas size do I usually like to work with? And an easy way to remember that is, you know, 8.5 by 11. All I do is 8.5 by 14.5. I just add those extra, extra inches onto it just to make it a little bit more of a cool composition. So I'll go to File, New. And then here, you go to inches, width, 14.5, height, 8.5. And the resolution, this is also very important, 300. Makes for good prints. Good printing quality is 300 DPI, so don't forget that. So now you can see here, that gives us this nice little composition. It's not quite squared up like a, like a regular piece of paper. And it adds to your, your compositions with whatever you choose to do. So yeah, 8.5 by 14.5 usually won't steer you wrong, so give that a shot, let me know what you think. And now, my question to the audience, and that is, the holidays are usually all about, <laughs> you're excited about what you're going to get, let's be honest. You're all excited about what you want, what you're going to get on, you know, on your holiday, whenever you celebrate it. But, my question to you, and what I'd like to see down in the comments, is what gift are you giving this holiday season that is your favorite? What is your favorite gift that you are giving to somebody else? And if you can give me a good comment on that, I that will make me very happy because, and, and I'm not blaming you because I, these last few years, it's always been hard for me to buy gifts for people. And it's not necessarily because I don't have money. It's, um, 
I like I could always I, I can always justify spending money on getting a gift for somebody. But the problem is, is that I I just can't figure out what people want. You know, <laughs> it's like oh well, I could do this or maybe that, and then I just never really get around to it. So I think that's a very important part of the holiday season. Not only just getting your PlayStation or your Xbox or your game or whatever Skyrim, Diablo three, but it is about giving. So please leave me a comment about an awesome gift that you are giving to somebody else. And with that, I will invite you to submit anything that you make using this tutorial to the Facebook. Also, subscribe to the Twitter for the next couple weeks because we will not be having our shows at the usual set time until the new year begins. So I want to keep you guys updated on that. And if I release videos on here, you'll be the first ones to know. And with that, I bid you farewell. I will say happy holidays. My name is Keenan Lafferty. Thumbs up if you like this show. Thumbs down if you don't. And I will see you guys in the new year.